thank you for joining us. Welcome to Community Connection Hour presented by San Jose Public Library. During the month of August, we will use this time to hold a back to cool or back to school speaker series. Our topic for today is on early learning and elementary education. We have a packed panel today. Our guest speakers for today are Lisa from San Jose Public Library's Early Ed at the MLK Library, Jamie from Santa Clara County Office of Education, Jennifer from Dahl Family Resource Center, and Tahiri, Anarita, and Jonathan from Grail Family Services. If you have any questions, please ask in the chat and we'll be more than happy to answer them. We can take questions in English, Spanish, and Vietnamese. For more information about our programs, please check out www.sjpl.org. Lisa, take it away. Wonderful. Well, thank you very much, FLCs, um, for having me. And thank you, Jeff, for the intro. My name is Lisa. I work with the San Jose Public Library and I work in the early education unit. We have a very small unit. It is in the Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Library downtown. There are seven of us right now um, that are in the unit. And of course, like most of us on here, as of March of last year, we've been working virtually and working from home. But I'm gonna tell you a little bit about early ed and kind of what we do. And then if there's questions, again, Victoria, can they ask questions in my spot or do they ask at the end altogether? I forget. That's a great question. And we have five minute Q, Q and A when you're done. Got it, got it. So um, like I said, in early education, we work with families with young children. We say zero to five. Sometimes, um, you know, we work with first, second graders, but it's typically the little ones. And what we're trying to do, what our goal is in the early education unit is we wanna provide children and caregivers of all backgrounds. We wanna provide everyone with access to high quality early education programs and resources so that everybody has the opportunity to um, learn new ideas and new skills new possibilities and have a really safe space to explore and grow. Um, again, things have definitely changed this last year, but for those of you that can remember, and I know our branches are opening back up again, but branches have, um, before COVID, there was what we called a We Play unit um, of toys in the children's area because we know as early educators, children need to play. That's how children learn. And so that's something from early ed that we have um, in the libraries. Again, right now, it is not on the floor. Um, I'm not quite sure when it might come back, but that is something that we provided from early ed to the branches. So again, um, this is, I'm talking to you about the virtual programs that we're doing, which we kind of pivoted to as of last March. So something that's been really popular is we have virtual preschool programs every day at nine o'clock, and we have virtual story times every day at 1030. And that's been going on pretty much since last March. We realized very quickly we had to get going with this. Um, the preschool programs came about because families and parents said, you know, we love the story times, but could there be something a little bit more, for lack of a better word, academic? So that's why we have like artsy ABCs, where they talk about the ABCs, math at play, there's some math going on on Tuesdays. So this schedule is still set as far as I know it's going to continue. Um, again, when we actually bring back in-person story times and all in the libraries, uh, we're not real sure at this point. So you can certainly catch us every day with these different programs that we have going on. This is something very new that we just launched in June. And I think this is perfect for kind of the early learning. And this is really good for families as well as childcare providers, family childcare homes, folks that take care of children at home. They're called Reread Books to Go and Grow. It's a bag of books. You check it out just like a book for a three week period. And you have 12 different concepts or, or topics to choose from. Inside each bag, um, there are tip sheets. And these tip sheets are meant to just help you with 
uh, a concept and maybe how to introduce it to your child. So we have some categories. The 12 concepts are under voices in our community series is one. Children and social emotional learning is the second one and difficult conversations is the third. And for instance, um, under social emotional, we have things like perseverance, making friends, feelings, voices in our community. We have celebrating black voices, celebrating LGBTQ plus voices, celebrating um, Asian and Pacific Islander voices. And then the difficult conversation series, we have things like separation anxiety, um, talking to your children about social justice, kind of those conversations that are a little bit bigger um, to have with children. Um, and again, these are perfect for families. If you wanna check a book out and sit down with your children, again, the tip sheets just talk about maybe how to introduce um, the topic of social justice to your child. There's seven or eight books in each bag and the books are um, meant again for younger children. And I've also heard that uh, childcare providers are really enjoying these bags. Um, if they're doing a unit or they wanna talk about um, maybe social justice or they wanna talk about South Asian voices, they'll check out a bag and use this in their preschool. So these have been pretty popular. So please check these out. Um, again, our branches are open now. They should be either somewhere near the children's area or you could ask one of the staff there and just say, hey, I'm looking. Do you guys have any We Read bags um, for me to check out? And they can let you know what they have. We also have, and we just reintroduced these. So um, I'm excited they're back in circulation. We Play and Learn kits. So again, back in March, I think even before March in February, we stopped circulating these. These have books and not only books, but they have toys. These are um, kits. They are plastic boxes that you can again, check out just like a book, but because of the small pieces and the toys and the fact that COVID was happening, um, they just now came back. And again, we've had really um, great feedback from preschool teachers, family childcare teachers, folks that take care of children at home um, because it's really nice to have books and toys around a certain subject. So there's 11 concepts as of right now. We have about 250 kits that are circulating throughout the branches. Again, they have tip sheets inside, just like the We Read bags that kind of tell you what you can do with the toys, questions you can ask, activities that you can do. And same thing, these are like a book. The checkout time is for three weeks. You can request these also if you want the farm animals kit, but your branch doesn't have it, you can put a hold on it like a book and say, please send it to my branch, Joyce Ellington, whatever, and the kit will be delivered there. So these are really uh, nice to have also. And I wanted to just mention, um, our FFN program, because this is more working with adults, but I think it's still important for working with adults who are working with young children. FFNs are known as family, friend, and neighbor, or another term would be informal caregivers. So these are not licensed um, family child care homes. It's not a licensed preschool. This is maybe an aunt or a friend down the street who's taking care of some children. And we found out that uh, we have a lot of FFNs when our libraries were open and story times were happening. We had a lot of FFNs that would come in with children for story time because um, the family's working and so they would bring them in. And we got to thinking, this is a really big group of people. So we started a program last year where we gave um, support to FFNs um, in a lot of different ways. We have training for them. We gave them Chromebooks and hotspots. And we have lots of child development training, basically trying to tell these folks that you guys are really important. You take care of a lot of children. We talk to them about how special they are. And this program is all free to them, all the training. It's gonna start up again in the fall. So I just wanted to kind of mention it. If you know anybody that might be interested in this or if you yourself are interested, I have our um, 
website or email address at the end that you can contact us. So we also have some other programs. We've been trying to do different story times this past, what, 16, 17 months. We have inclusive story time, a birthday story time once a month and different bilingual story times. Right now we have Vietnamese and Spanish. Ready for K is a texting program that can just help parents of young children in it. You tell the, um, send in a text and tell them your child's age and they'll just give you some fun tips. So I'm doing it um, for my grandson and it, it'll just send me a text three times a week that says, you know, don't forget when you go to the grocery store, it's a great time you can talk about colors of the fruit and the vegetables and stuff like that. So that's kind of a fun one. And Telephone Tales um, is recorded story times in different languages that you can just call up and listen to anytime you want. So it's kind of nice if you're not ready for the nine o'clock or 1030 story time we have virtually, you can call this line and get a story time anytime. So I have our website. Um, you can always go on there and find out any other programs that's happening, any other things that we're doing, or send us an email. We're pretty good about answering our emails. And I wonder if anybody has a question or two for me about anything that I've said. Awesome. Well, thank you, Lisa. And thank you for keeping that um, slide up so people can take a picture. Oh, sure. Si tienen alguna pregunta en español, también estoy aquí para poder uh, darles información en español y preguntarle a Lisa. Thank you, Ophelia. You're welcome. Uh, I think there's a question in the chat box. Oh. oh okay. Can stay at home parents take part in the FFN network? Let me ask, what I would ask you is, do you take care of any other children other than just your children? Um, you know what? I would, you could still call us. What, or why don't you email the early ed? Um, I, I know that typically you usually have to take care of some other children, but you know what? You never know. So email us at early ed and just say, hey, I stay at home with my children and I'm interested in the program and we'll get back to you. That would be great. Awesome. She says, thank you. Um, anyone else have any other questions? Uh, Lisa, would you say that since COVID, uh, you have seen uh, an increase in the virtual the need to have virtual programming for children and families? Um, definitely. And what we've heard time and time again, and I think any of us that are doing virtual programs, whether it's with adults or children, but I think they're going to stay. Even um, I think even when we do open up and have story times in the library, yeah from families, especially families with young children, what we're hearing is it's so convenient. I don't have to pack up my child and get the diaper bag and run out of the house and come to your story time. I can just sit them on the couch and do it virtually. So I think families enjoy the ease of it and the fact that they don't have to. It doesn't, I don't think it means they're never gonna come in of course for in-person, but I, I see, we've seen um, that people really like to just be able to do it in their home. Yeah. Awesome. Well, let's give Lisa another hand. Thank you so much, Lisa. Sure, let me stop sharing. So the library. The next person can do it. Awesome, thank you. Okay, and next we're gonna have Jamie with County Office of Education. Are you guys there? I think you guys froze for one me. second on my end. <laughs> well, hi everyone. Thank you so much for giving me a little bit of time to share with you what I do at the County Office of Education. So I am the Parent Engagement Coordinator and my job is to elevate parent and school partnerships. 
And partly what I do is I provide a parenting workshop series with the uh, common core supports. So whether it be math or language arts, we provide a way to give some really tangible supports for parents on how they can support their kids with reading and writing and math and science as well. So um, in order to sign up for our parenting series, uh, please go to our website. It's parentengagement.secoe.org or email me. I'll put my email and my uh, website on in the chat. But a quick story about my own kids. When they were young, like the preschool age, I took them to the library and signed them up for their own library card. And I took a picture of it and I put it on social media. And they were so proud of that because whenever somebody saw the picture, when they would see the kids, they would say, oh, can I see your card? And they would be so proud to, to whip it out. They had their own little wallets. And every time they went to the library, they said it was like, you know, you know, when mama goes to the store and uses a credit card. And so what I would do is I would um, take a picture uh, after they borrowed the books and I would just post it on social media again and, and I would caption it what the coup girls are reading. And so, again, it spurred up a lot of conversations. So that really connected what they're reading with um, how they're connecting with our friends and family. So um, I'm here to support you guys in any way I can with a connection between home and school. So reach out whenever you need. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jamie. And um, can you share a little bit? I know that you um, uh, have a strong background in early literacy. Can you share some tips with our, with our families that are on today of things that they can do at home with their children to promote early literacy? Yeah, absolutely. I would say one of the best things is to take them to the library and let them explore all the different types of books that they want. And when they sense that freedom of, you know, it's okay to check out these books and there's no restrictions, then they'll be more liberated to read even books that are too hard for them because then it's okay, let's try it together and just keep on exploring. And what I would do with them is I would uh, read the words or um, if it's a picture book, point as I read along so that they start understanding that the words follow in a certain format. And, and then sometimes if it was um, a picture with the certain words, or if there was not, then I would ask them to, to act it out. And we would have fun role playing. So in that way, the reading became so much more alive and so much more concrete for them. And we would do that with anything like if it was a science book about bugs then we would act out what the bugs would be doing and and so that made it more alive for them awesome um does anyone have any questions for jamie uh i know that they're asking for your website in the chat room chat box oh i think uh julie put it there okay it's easy to remember parentengagement.secoe.org and it will redirect you to uh, the official name of the web page. And here's my email address. And um, another question I, oh wait, first before I go, does anyone have any questions for Jamie regarding parent engagement or early literacy? Um, the next thing is, what two tips can you give families about engaging in their child's learning as we go back to school and what might be kind of a different type of setting? Yeah, as uh, kids are going back to school, there's going to be uh, definitely a few more um, traditions or rituals. You might want to put it in like a friendly tones. <laughs> it's not like a chore. You know, sometimes our wording has a lot to do with how um, kids frame of mind, um, you know, with regarding, you know, masking or sanitizing or keeping their distance a little bit, but definitely encourage them by asking them how their day went, what was something new, because this will just seep into a new normal and the kids don't know any better. So the more that you treat this as a normal occurrence, this is the way we're going to do things and it will be okay. You guys can still play with your friends outside. Um, then they will continue to adopt this positive outlook about going back to school uh, in person or whatever learning activities at the, at the library or they have some uh, virtual story times and this would just become their way to interact with other people. 
And as far as, you know, getting back into school, uh, make it a celebration, have them prepare their snacks the day ahead of time, choose their clothes the day ahead of time, and they have something to anticipate. So all of these types of structures that you put into your schedule will really help them to look forward to what's going to happen. I like that even for me. <laughs> <laughs> that was schedule. That's cool. Okay. Anyone else have any questions, comments, or ideas? Okay, thank you so much, Jamie. Thank you. For joining us, absolutely. Okay, and we're gonna be getting ready for our next presenter, which will be Grill Family Services. Thank you, Victoria. Absolutely. Awesome, so I'll do a quick a little introduction, start and stop, um, and then I'll pass it to my team members. Uh, so we will be presenting for Grill Family Services. Uh, we are located in the Mayfair community of East Side San Jose, and we focus on early childhood education, uh, as well as some educational programs for parents as well. Uh, and then next slide, please. So we have two locations at the current moment. We have our San Antonio campus, which you guys can see on the left side. Uh, we have two buildings for this location, uh, and we have preschool as well as our other programs we host here at the San Antonio campus. The Story campus is a little bit farther, but this one is just our preschool site, and we are hoping to get a little bit more preschool enrollment, so I'll tell you a little bit more about that now, please. Can I get the next slide? Awesome. So this is going to be our program breakdown. Uh, so for preschools, we have preschools at the San Antonio campus, Story Road campus, and we, other, we also have different programs. Some of the family programs we have include case management, new parent, hablemos juntos, support group, ASQ, ESL. And for our school-based programs, we have Yes, We Can Read, which we partner with uh, San Antonio Elementary School and Dorset Elementary School, uh, and as well as Raising a Reader. And for, for, for professional development, we have the SEATS program, the BBP BAP, uh, which is targeted for parents. It's kind of like a target uh, parenting app where parents can kind of talk to each other and learn a little bit about tips and so-and-so. Uh, and we'll start family engagement. Let's go to the next slide. Awesome. Uh, so I'm going to pass it shortly to my team member, Ms. Anarita Reyes. Could you do a quick introduction and then talk a little bit about her preschool for us? Yeah, so... Um... So this is our preschool program that we provided. So we have a Head Start Preschool and State Funded Preschool. So um, the Grill Family Services State Funded Preschool offered a low income family the opportunity to provide the three to five years old with the cognitive, social, emotional, and physical development and skill that will prepare them for kindergarten and beyond. So we have early literacy math that we offer to the family and especially to the children. And we have early literacy also that we provided to our young children. And mostly our children that attending the preschool, either the Head Start preschool or state preschool, for a both sides, um, they are 100% they are um, graduate ready for kinder. So also we have a BBP app that we call a Building Block of Parenting. Uh, the parenting app that helping the family, giving them strategy, how to be more engaged and supporting these children. Because we do believe education is not only for young children, including the entire family, and especially the modeling of the parent, and especially the mother. So if part of our preschool program, we encourage the children, the family to being engaged, being informed, and being inspired. So as Jonathan mentioned earlier, and she's our enrollment specialist, um, so we have two programs that we are supporting. We have uh, the one in San Antonio and the one in the third room. So this is one of our sites in San Antonio. So uh, what uh, earlier I mentioned by Lisa, that the preschool program or early child education, we did provide experience to develop the whole child, especially the social emotional development, how to build warm and positive nurture relationship facilitation and challenge identity and belonging. Of course, the cognitive development, how to support the reasoning and problem solving, having things to more on analysis and supporting their learning too. Language and literacy, it's very important for the young children, how to express it in their language and to understanding what we're talking, how to increase the vocabulary and early literacy, very important, more reading, uh, helping them how to write and do the journal and um, that what 
also we have a support from the library, though I'm very important to help the children. And also the practical development, providing experience, using a small muscle and good motor skill. So we have different activities we provided for the children Monday to Friday every single day. So our classes, we're gonna start in August 16, all the way to next year in June. So, and then we have another program in Storo, almost the same thing. Um, I think I'm gonna go with the creative curriculum and stuff. It's a research-based curriculum that in, it content with providing broad and by experiences and activity to help children promote their learning and development. And of course, we have a staff over the love, acceptance, and understanding and opportunity to learn and experience success. Because we believe the preschool children um, is very important, especially at their age, to understand more, to learn more, and to explore and discover, especially in hand-on experience. So we do believe uh, every child is different kind of flower and all together they make the world a beautiful garden. So a part of our responsibility as a uh, supervisor and program manager to make sure we're helping nurture, nourish the children's need, uh, not only physically, also included the social emotional, how to get along and involved with other children, how to build trust and good relationship with an adult or the teacher. And, and we noted and observed a lot of preparation we help in the children because we do believe the children is our future and at the same time at early age they're learning the much better to prepare them for the to go into kinder and if you have any questions so yeah so right now um we give you to tahiti thank you miss anarita and thank you, Victoria, and your team for inviting us for today. Uh, my name is Sihir Gutierrez, and I'm the per Parent Service Coordinator at GFS. Um, so first, I'm going to go over our SEEDS program, which is part of our professional development. We also work with providers around the community to talk a little bit more about um, how to advance their professional development. And as well, we're partnered up with First Five. Um, and we're doing their program, The Seeds. So The Seeds really focus on sensitive encouragement, education, development, and self-image for the providers. So we work um, with the providers to make sure that they're doing um, the uh, curriculum as well as to provide them with more strategies and techniques uh, to better support their uh, children and families. Our next program is the Yes We Can Read. So this is a partnership that we have with the Alum Rock School District with Dorsa in San Antonio. Um, we provide a mentoring for children for first grade and second grade where they're reading and math. Um, so currently we did adapt for the pandemic and we did all our sessions virtually. Um, Rosie is our, at the moment was our parent um, literacy program. And right now it is um, to Carmen, but it's still a program and we're looking forward to work with the schools again. And hopefully if your students are in these schools, they get to join our program, which is a great uh, tutoring for them for their reading and as well for their math. We also host um, family engagement workshops for families to learn more about how they can be involved in their children's uh, reading and as well as their math and how we can best support um, the whole family to be involved in their education. And then we also have a series of other programs called the Birth and Beyond. Uh, so we have a new parent workshop for families that have children between zero to one years old. So any new family that is expecting a new baby in their family, we hold a workshop. Um, it's a course and it's between um, two hours a week. And we also provide families with um, supplies, with um, activities as well, so they can do with the newborns. We talk about all the frustrations, all of the amazing things that happen to birth. Um, from the first year of their life and how we can do it. We do activities like um, massages, infant massage. So we teach families, parents of how to give their children infant massages and we provide the materials. And as well, we focus a lot on bonding, um, excuse me, <laughs> um, in you know, bonding with one another as well as reading and getting all those extra activities that we can do with our newborns. We also have another workshop called Hablemos Juntos which is a workshop for parents that have children between one and three, so that taller area. We focus most in social, emotional, cognitive, and language development, as well as behaviors. We know those terrible twos and threes happen, so we talk a lot about our techniques, how can we support those, and what we can do um, for positive reinforcement and other strategies that we can do to help our children um, 
um, help women with their development. And so we also have a support group for families, especially for mothers. So this is a support group for mothers um, who are looking to connect with an, um, other families in their community and as well as to have that extra support. So we talk about their um, frustrations, um, their hopes and their dreams and how we can um, you know, be present for our families and how we can be there for one another. We also provide uh, English as a second language classes. Um, we are partnered up with uh, all of um, the adult district for, um, I apologize, the adult um, education district. So we have one of the teachers come in our site. We do start on August 10th for the English class. If you are interested, um, it's Monday to Thursday from 8.30 to 11.30. And it'll be both virtual and in, um, in person. We also have case management. So anybody that's looking for that extra support, um, we're here to help you as well. One-on-one -on -one individual sessions, one hour per week. It could be through the phone or virtually or in person. Um, your preference, but we help you connect to other resources in the community. For example, if families looking for food resources, immigrant uh, resources, job, um, we're here to help them out and we'll provide those connections with the community. We also provide ASQC evaluations for children from zero to five if a families are interested in learning more about their child's development and what we can do together to help them um, either be at their uh, development level or help them advance a little bit more. Or if you have some concerns, we help you get those referrals and connect you to the correct agency. And as well, we have safety net services. So if families um, have children beyond five years old that are old, we older, we still help them out and we provide them referrals. So if a family as a teenager is looking for some resources, we help them connect with other agencies to make sure that they get those appropriate resources they're looking for. Um, sometimes we also provide those food boxes, um, uh, diaper di distribution as well. So sometimes we do have those extra um, donations that we provide to the community. And Here's my contact information and you guys are, um, you know, need our help and need our services. We're here to help you out. Again, my name is Cynthia Gutierrez and I'm the parent service coordinator. My email address is here in my uh, office number as well in my working hours. And if you need to contact um, us as well for preschool, feel free to give me a call and I can uh, refer you to Jonathan or Ms. Anarita to give you more information. But thank you so much for your time. And I believe that's it. Thank you, Victoria. Thank you. Thank you, Grow Family Services. Thank um, you. And um, can one of our translators just let um, our patrons know that they can ask questions in Spanish or Vietnamese, and we'll take this opportunity for questions. Si tienen alguna pregunta, aquí podemos hacer las preguntas y yo puedo traducir para ustedes también. Gracias. Nếu mà ai ở đây um, có câu hỏi hỏi tiếng Việt thì Diệp sẽ giúp được. Thank you so much, Ophelia and Dip. Um, I, I have a question, which is um, uh, the preschool program, is that free? Is that on a sliding scale? Hi, good question, Victoria. Yeah, so our, our preschool and girl family services is free. Um, it's funded by the state, so the parents never have to pay a single penny. The only thing they really have to pay for is maybe their children's backpack, but we are trying to find a partnership with another organization to get those free backpacks for our children. Um, but yeah, if we don't qualify the families, we will still help the family re and refer them to another preschool nearby or connect them with the Office of Education of Silicon, uh, Santa Clara County. <laughs> awesome. Um, my next question is about um, you you shared some parenting programs. Um, one I think was SEEDS. What's the time commitment if a parent is interested? Uh, thank you. Uh, for SEEDS, it is more for the providers. Um, so if there is a parent that does have their own daycare, daycare it could be in-home, um, uh, but as long as they're providing services for children, um, they're able to commit and I can set them up with our, uh, with Ariana, who is the coordinator for that program. Okay, oh cool. Okay, so, so it's for the, uh, wait, you said SEEDS is for the, ch ch the not the parent. 
Yes, it would be for the providers, but if they're- For the providers, okay, I got you. Sorry about that. No problem. Um, and then Miss Ophelia, can you, are, are there any questions in Spanish in the chat box? My chat box for some reason is delayed. <laughs> I don't know why. I think that Jonathan's doing a good job answering the Spanish. Oh, he's out oh, perfect. Okay, okay, the okay awesome. Thank you, Jonathan. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, my connection was close. I was trying to look and it was uploading. <laughs> thank you, Jonathan. Thank, yeah, thank you so much, Jonathan. We appreciate you. Um, okay, does anyone else have any other questions before we go on to, um, to our next presenter? Okay, well, let's give Grill Family Services a hand. Thank you so much. And now we're going to be hearing from uh, Catholic Charities, FRC, and First Five. Hello, everyone. Um, let me just pull up my screen so that way I can share it. Sorry, it's, it's loading on my end. Are you guys able to see it or is it still? I there we go. Now we got it. Okay, Jennifer. Okay. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, my name is Jennifer Interiano, and I am the program supervisor for um, Doll's Family Resource Center. Uh, so here we go. So where you can find us, uh, we are located inside of Doll Elementary, which is 3200 Water Street. I was like telling families we're pretty close to the drive-ins on, on Monterey. I feel like that kind of pinpoints us a little bit more. Um, and since we are inside of the school, our room number is P5. I've also listed on here our school number, which the hours right now are from eight to four, um, as well as our office number. Um, this is where we can be reached at and our FRC hours are from nine to 5 p.m. Um, so today it's just me presenting, um, but I also thought it would be nice to show you guys um, my wonderful team. And the, uh, so at Doll with our FRC, it's me and four lovely community workers. And we are the ones, um, my community workers are the ones that are mainly out there doing a lot of outreach and they are the ones that facilitate most of the workshops that we offer at our center. Miss Jennifer, unfortunately you look frozen and we just see a black screen that says loading, or is that just me? No, that's something for me as well. Same thing here. Oh no. Okay. Let me see. Let me stop sharing. Yeah, if you stop see. sharing and maybe do it again. Should we all turn off our videos? Sometimes I know that. Oh, drink. Okay. I don't know. We've we've done that before. Should we Good try idea, that? Yeah, Lisa. Okay, let's okay. turn off our video. I turned mine off. Okay, give me one second. I'm gonna exit out of this. No problem. That's the beauty of technology. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, it could oh, just no. be the day because my chat box is really slow. Okay, I'm gonna try one more time and see if it loads. Let's see. One second. I think it might actually be from my end. Oh no. Let me see. We're used to having internet problems, so don't worry about it. Yes. <laughs> okay, I'm like, please hold. I'll be right back. <laughs> okay. Well, now we see you. Let's... You're not frozen, so that's good. Okay. Let's see this. You guys able to see my screen? Yes. You got now it. I can see. Okay. And your mouse is moving, okay. so it seems. Yeah, okay, and you're not frozen. Up. Yay. Perfect. Yay. <laughs> okay. I'm going to turn off my camera if I freeze again. Um, okay, so our workshops that we offer, um, we are funded through first five. So the workshops we offer are these main five ones. And we offer them throughout the year on rotation. Um, one of them being Triple P, which focuses on positive parenting. One of my favorites, Abriendo Puertas, which is also um, about leadership between parents and caregivers. We also offer the parenting workshop of C 
seeds. Um, so this was not for the providers, this more so parents and it's understanding more child language and literacy development. Uh, and baby care is another one which mainly focuses on, um, or this is more for new parents or anybody with little babies, uh, especially because in this workshop, we focus a lot on infant and toddler care. And lastly, we also have 24 seven dads, which is uh, for any father or male caregiver. And again, these workshops, we offer them throughout the year. We have different rounds. And right now, because of COVID, they're all are virtual. Um, in September, we have coming up baby care and 24 seven dads and registration is open for those. So if anyone is interested, you can contact me and I can give you more information on when those workshops will take place. Um, we try to make them as fun as possible because we know virtual can be um, very challenging but we've had successful rounds within the past year. And um, yeah, so if you're interested or know anyone, uh, please give us a call and we will gladly either register them or let them know of other FRCs nearby that have different workshops going on. Um, along with our parenting workshops, other services we provide um, at the moment is we do distribute diapers and formula uh, as, and feminine hygiene products. At Doll. our distribution days are Mondays and Tuesdays from nine to 12. So if you are interested or know anyone who's interested, uh, you can give us a call. And at the end, I'll, I'll provide again the number. Um, and also with this, we do work with Healthier Kids Foundation and they help register a lot of clients for diapers um, and formula. And so I wrote down their number there. It's the 877-464-0244 number. Um, and the Healthier Kids Foundation has more access to different FRCs within the county. So if Dahl isn't your closest FRC, they can definitely pinpoint which FRC will be closest to you. Um, we also provide art enrichment classes such as Zumbini, which is Zumba for Babies, music and movement, and our story time, which we do in partnership with the San Jose Library. Uh, additionally, we also do food services. So every Monday at Doll from 2 to 3.30, we provide food through loaves and fishes. So it's ready to eat food. All you have to do is microwave it. Um, and along with food, if you get the plates um, of food, you get sometimes fruit, they bring pastries from Costco. So they have really, really good stuff. Um, and you can take up to eight portions, so like eight people of your family. And it's every Monday, it's on campus. Uh, if you drive by, you'll see us at the front um, and that's every Monday. We also do a drive through distribution in partnership with Second Harvest and that is on Saturday. So our next distribution will be on the 21st of August. And on our distribution, when you come by, we have calendars listing future dates. Um, and those tend to be on Saturdays. And because we are with Catholic Charities, um, at the Resource Center, we can definitely refer you to any specific um, resource that Catholic Charities offers. In the next slide, I have <laughs> we have a long list, but within it, we have um, like some of our popular ones are like Immigration Legal Services. We can definitely connect you with that department within our agency. And within Catholic Charities, we also have a ton of um, different programs for children. We have a youth empowerment service uh, program. We have an after school program. Um, so anything program wise from Catholic Charities, we can definitely refer you to different uh, programs because at the FRC, we mainly focus on services for children zero to five, but also any program within the agency regarding like housing and stuff, we can definitely refer you guys to that. And um, every month I put out the monthly calendar for this particular center and for DAW, it can be found on DAW's website and it can also be found on the first five website. Uh, or you can contact me and I can definitely add you into our list. And that's where I list out what specific workshop we have coming up. If we have anything going on on campus, as well as our food distribution, our diapers distribution, that's anything related <laughs> to the center and um, will be on this monthly calendar. And lastly, um, I'll leave this up for a little bit. This is again, where you can call us. Um, the office number is the one I would highly recommend. We do um, have the capacity of, we have Spanish speaking um, staff as well as Vietnamese speaking staff. And I do wanna note that most of our parenting workshops mainly are either in Spanish or Vietnamese. We rarely do them in English just because a lot of the families we serve, um, that's the language preference. So again, um, any questions you might have regarding the FRC or if you wanna know more about the resources within Catholic Charities, give us a call. We're open Monday to Friday from nine to five. And that is it for us all. Awesome. Thank you, Miss Jennifer. You did a great job recovering. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Um, does anyone have any questions for Jennifer? Victoria, I do. Um, 
Hi, Jennifer. It's Lisa. I'm curious, are you doing in person programming? Are you open to the public? And if you're not, when do you do you know when you will open for that? Great question. Yes. Thank you, Lisa. Um, so unfortunately, right now we are not open on the uh, to the public specifically because we are on campus and we're located inside the school, like all the way in the back of the school. So um, we really it's whatever the district rules right now. And as of right now, we aren't allowed to bring anybody other than students inside campus. Most of our services, though, like, for example, we do still provide ASQs. Um, we do it by appointment. So we will set up at the front of the school. We'll have like a table and canopy. And that's what we'll provide most of our in-person services, such as like ASQs or, of course, for our diaper distribution. But most of it, we have been just doing it virtually or through Zoom. Um, and as far as right now, uh, we've heard that until December, we cannot bring anybody um, into campus. And we're hoping that maybe with the new year, when we're allowed to, we can do a hybrid approach. But at the moment, everything's virtual or by appointment. Great. Thank you. Yeah. Virtual. Right, great question, Lisa. Anyone else have any questions, comments? Um, hi, Jennifer. Uh, my, mission, my English and it's very good. I'm high class, okay? Um, my question is, for enrolling in this program, what docu documents we need to bring uh, or, or show for, for enroll? Do documents for which program? Yes. I'm sorry, I was having, I think it's the internet for my end, I was having trouble hearing. You asked if there's any documents that need to be brought for the program? I think she's asking what documents she needs to bring to if she wants to enroll in the program. So, uh, sorry, I'm a little confused. So it, like, as far like, for example, like for diapers and stuff like that, we don't need, you don't need to bring any documentation if you want to enlist in those programs. Um, if you want, like, am I getting that question right? I think you're- Are right. there any programs that she will need to bring like specific documents? Maybe you could go from that point. Okay, so as far as like for our parenting workshops or like the diaper programs, um, specific programs that we have in the FRC, no documentation is needed. Um, like we won't ask for like taxes or anything like that. Um, now within other programs with Catholic Charity, when we do the referral, whoever is from that department will let them know if they need specific documentation to bring for any of their programs. But as far as the FRC, um, no documentations are needed. Thank you, thank you. You're welcome. Um, and there is a request in the chat box if you could share your link. Yeah, um, I'll go ahead and I'll, I'll share the links in here. And uh, there was um, a page where it said um, behavioral health services that you offer. Can you speak a little bit about that, especially during times like this where mental health is so important for our children? Yeah, so we have a whole department um, with different programs. They have one where it's like family and child counseling. Um, we have youth services. So anything like that, we have a specific, within our agency, we have a referral um, page where we can ask more in-depth questions and then that way it can direct them to the right department. Um, we also have, sorry, I'm trying to go back and get the links. Um, we also have programs for, um, senior citizens uh, regarding like activities and stuff that they can do. Um, so those are some of them, but that's definitely something that when they come to the FRC, if they wanna know more about um, the Catholic Charities uh, like programs that we have, we can definitely share that with them. Awesome. Um, and we have a question. Thank you, Jonathan. Um, Mercedes or Jeff, can you speak to when this video will be available for them to watch, which is great. Yeah, so this video will be, uh, since it's recorded, we'll put it on YouTube in the next few days. So you just have to look it out for on the on the SJPL, I believe the SJPL YouTube page. Is that correct, Victoria? I SJPL? think so. Yeah, it's the SJPL YouTube page. So if you go to our main website and scroll all the way to the bottom, you'll see a link for a... Um, a YouTube icon, you can click that and then you can find all of the FLC Family Learning Center uh, videos there. So this one will be included in that. 
and all, and also you can come back next Thursday because we're going to be here every Thursday in August talking about back to school. So uh, please come back. You can register again for next week if you didn't register for um, all four. And we're even after August, we're here every Thursday from one to two. Um, and as we're coming to a close, we want to again thank all of our speakers. Let's give them a round of applause. And all of our participants, you get a round of applause. And FLCs or AmeriCorps Vistas, do you have any announcements, comments before we close for the day? Yes, I'm just going to translate about the video being available on the YouTube in Spanish. Um, no más quería mencionar que el video se va a poner en el YouTube de la biblioteca. Ustedes pueden accesar el YouTube de la biblioteca buscando por la San Jose Public Library o también yendo a la página de la biblioteca que es www.sjpl.org. Y van hasta abajo de esta página y donde está el símbolo de YouTube, le hacen clic ahí y ahí van a poder entrar a ver todos los videos que hemos subido de estas presentaciones y mucho más de la biblioteca. Um, también este programa para las personas que participan en el programa de tiempo para mí, vamos a este, enseñar este video, la grabación de este video cuando esté disponible y ahí voy a traducir para ustedes la información a español también. Gracias. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Ophelia. Okay, you guys, thank you so much. Thank you for joining us and you all have a wonderful afternoon and we hope to see you uh, next Thursday at one o'clock. Thank you.